The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola. Hey, Kara Oosterhaus here with realagriculture.com. We are back here today with another Canola School episode, and I have here with me Justine Cornelson, who is an agronomy specialist with the Canola Council of Canada. How's it going today? Yeah, good. I'm enjoying another nice warm day, so. Absolutely. So we're now getting to the time of year across the prairies where we're seeing, I mean, obviously there's variation, but we're starting to see some flowering in canola. Um, And with that, we're looking at scouting for sclerotinia. So what can you tell me about scouting? Yeah, you know what, it is that time of year as we move into July, that crop's starting to flower. Um, sclerotinia, it's something, it's our kind of our, our top disease each year for canola. Um, the way we manage it is with a fungicide application. So it's really making that decision of do you need to spray or not? Um, so that's where the, the scouting piece comes into it. And and really, it, it comes down to environmental conditions. You know, do you have enough moisture? Um, is that canopy wet? Is that soil uh, saturated or wet um, to create... Uh, or to start that life cycle off. And um, in Manitoba in particular, we grow a lot of host crops for sclerotinia. So we we know that the inoculums there, we know the sclerotia bodies are in the soil. They're just waiting for the perfect conditions to germinate. Um, so it is, it's one of those really tough ones. And of course, each year is different. And we've had upwards of 15 inches of rain here the last uh, week in Manitoba. Uh, so we're not really sure what that's going to do to the sclerotia bodies. Are they going to be able to germinate and produce spores when they're underwater most likely not um, but we've been hot and humid and and that's what that disease really likes and, and how it flourishes so so what does it actually look like in the field so when we're when we're scouting for sclerotinia, um, the first kind of piece you're looking for is the applecia. So that's what's um, the kind of we call it the the mushroom or the tea like or like golf tea like uh, mushroom that comes out of the sclerotia body, and and that tiny little applecia is going to produce spores. Um, they're tough to find, so it's not a real good indicator. Um, just because you got to be down on your hands and knees to find them within the canola crop. But if you are finding them, that is going to give you a pretty good indicator that the conditions are, are right for development. Um, so that's step number one. And, and from there, the applecia push up spores into the canopy onto the canola petals. Uh, and then petals drop down. And, and that's what I'm saying. You can't see the spores at that stage, but you're really going to be wanting to watch the petal drop. Um, And from there, when the petals drop down into the canopy, they land on leaf material, um, they'll land on the stems, and and that's where the infection really takes off. So a few weeks after they've dropped, you're going to start to see, or actually actually a few days after they've started to drop, you're going to start to see kind of these watery lesions, gray discoloration, um, and eventually, with the conditions are right, you start to see white mold, which we also call it in soybeans. Same thing. Yeah. Uh, so what are some of the other host crops? As you said, soybeans. Um, is there anything else that actually carries that sclerotia? Yeah, so um, uh, sunflowers are actually one of the, the worst crops for it. Um, when you've got your big sunflower heads, that's where the sclerotia bodies develop. So they'll release uh, lots of sclerotia bodies back into the soil. Um, any broadleaf plant is a host for sclerotinia. And, and that's another issue. Just yeah, naturally within our, our environment, um, it, it occurs. So um, it's there on all other broadleaf plants as well. So that's why we, we do grow um, quite a few host crops and in areas where we grow lots of canola right every second year. Year, um, you're really building that that inoculum and, and allowing those sclerotia bodies to go back into the soil. So it, we know it's there, um, and it's really just making that decision in for canola if you spray or not. And how do you decide whether it is time to spray? Like, is there a certain number you're looking at per plants per square meter, or? Yeah, so with, with sclerotinia, um, you know, you kind of go through your little checklist. You know, I, I'm, I've Am I have I grown host crops the last few years? What are the environmental conditions? You know, have I seen a bunch of humidity? Um, Kelly Turkington just presented last week, and he was saying, you know, if you're seeing anywhere from I think it was ten or five to ten millimeters of rain every few days, uh, and if you've got a relative humidity of over eighty percent, those are the ideal conditions for those sclerotia um, bodies to germinate and and produce that apothecia and then eventually spores. 
Um, so that the conditions, um, you really got to consider that. And then when you're in the field on when to make that decision to spray or not, you're going to look at a percentage of bloom. And, and what you're wanting to do with your fungicide application is coat as many petals as possible before they drop down into the canopy. Uh, so when you go in, uh, the, the recommendation is anywhere from 20 to 50% bloom. And, and that window is, is put in place mainly because that's when the most amount of petals are going to be open. Uh, the rough kind of what we say or what we recommend is 30% bloom because at 30% bloom, that's when you start to get the petals dropping down into the canopy. So you need to coat them before. Uh, so when you're looking at that, that fungicide application, you're wanting a really high water volume so you can push that app or that fungicide down into the canopy and also coat the plants as well. Um, cause that's where the real site of infection is coming from is, is lower down in the canopy. So what sort of uh, yield impacts can sclerotinia actually have on your end result of the canola? There's a, a, a rough um, kind of yield loss calculator for it. So if you're seeing 10% infection, you're going to see half of that, uh, or you're gonna, any number, whatever your percent of infection is, you're going to see half of that be yield loss. So if you're seeing 10% infection, you're going to see 5% yield loss. And that's just the rough kind of window. Um, when we go in and do canola disease surveying for sclerotinia, there's different rating systems because, right, you can get sclerotinia on the pods, you can get it on the branches, main stem. Um, obviously, that infection that's happening lower down and on that main stem is going to then choke out yield for the rest of the plant. Uh, so those are the infections where we're wanting to avoid um, and that's where getting the early getting that early application on and encoding that plant entirely is going to help protect it um, with canola fungicide applications really are our kind of saving grace and if they're done correctly or done at the correct timing uh, they really do pay off awesome is there anything else you'd like to add um, I guess one kind of newer thing with sclerotinia is um, producers have the option to grow uh, sclerotinia tolerant varieties. Um, and uh, they do work or perform uh, slightly better than other varieties in regards to sclerotinia. But even in those high pressure years, uh, an application, a fungicide application is still recommended. Uh, so that's just something for producers that are growing, something that's got that sclerotinia tolerance to, to make note of. If extreme pr pressure is there, um, you're better off to probably spray to protect that yield. Um, there's lots of other tools to help uh, with scouting. So um, there's lots of new DNA tests and petal tests where you can submit petals to figure out um, if the spores are present for sclerotinia. And those um, types of uh, tests just really help overall with making that decision of if you should spray or not. And that's kind of really what we're, what producers are dealing with. And we've had a lot of moisture in, in areas across the prairies this year. Um, so that risk for sclerotinia is, is pretty high. Um, so going in with a timely application is really the, one of the, the best things producers can do um, for preserving their canola.